is all on that. Uh... Welcome back to Lucero Gaming. In today's video, it's everything about bricks. So stick around. So let's let's see how exactly does the automatic brake work, okay? Like I said, it controls your cars in the back and it also controls your locomotives, but there is a way to bypass that. And we'll get to that in a little bit, okay? So you can see here that the automatic brake is red. The reason why it's red is because that indicates that it is a emergency brake also. So if you can see on this side that it says emergency brake valve and that's red also, which that does work. So there are some things to know about this. You know, initial reduction is just a couple of pounds. You're putting on the cars, like the, you know, obviously the, the, the brake shoes, right? And the more you go up, uh, it obviously says like service and it goes from probably zero percent all the way to I think a hundred percent uh so hundred percent or full service. Now full service is the max air that you can put on those guys, okay? Besides emergency. Okay. I don't highly recommend that you get to this point. Um but if you have to you can use it, okay? You know, once you go from full service and you knock it off, obviously your pressure is gonna release um, and your brake pads on your cars the railroad cars are going to release also okay now there are some other things after full service you got supp suppression and that's kind of a bleed off um, off the braking system here and then you go into handle off now handle off is used for cutting in and out the automatic brake so you don't ever want to come to this point. Okay, we'll release it again. And a quick note here is no matter what, if this is the lead unit or the rear units, any braking system that has auto, any automatic brake on this side of the setup like this, or that uh, conductor emergency brake, if you pop that thing, so if you go fully into emergency, it's going to send the whole train to emergency even know that it's cut out okay now another issue that you might be having is possibly your train's not building up air sometimes i'm gonna wait for these dials to get up just a little bit more sometimes your train was an emergency and it has not reset itself so if you can see that this says uh pcs open right i'm gonna put the train to emergency now and you'll hear it you know start blowing air and that light should turn on all right, uh, obviously it's not emergency. Um, you can go over them with your little uh, dot. And if you push them, you can actually see if you know you push whatever button that you're on. I'm on the Xbox One and it lights up. Okay, then that just tells you that that light's working, right? So now just watch this light and uh, put it into emergency. Well, it's supposed to light up in real life it should light up now emergency obviously it, it sets the the max and max amount of air on everything locomotives and railroad cars and you can see that this white dial we were sitting about 80 to 90 pounds now it topped up to zero okay now if you go into emergency or if for some odd reason the train is not building up no air Put it into emergency and wait till uh, that white needle hits zero. Okay, once it hits zero, fully release it, and you'll see both white needles start raising up. The one to the left, closest to the horn, uh, is going to stop about 75 to 85, um, and then the one to the right, that one takes a little bit uh, longer because that's your um, main tanks. And it's probably going to go to 90 also. Okay. So while that's building up and you kind of know the automatic uh, with the dial and stuff like that. Let's talk about uh, the train right there coming in. Uh, to cut this guy out, 
uh, there's multiple ways to do it, but the, the way I do it is you go um, full service like that, come back down, uh, cut it out, and then go all the way to handle off, and that's it. Uh, you're able to swap ends now. Okay, so I'm gonna release, and I'm gonna put back to freight because we gotta have this air build back up. Okay, let's talk about the independent, which is down here. Okay. Uh, this is fully set and you have a cut in and cut out valve just down here so if you were walking it's going to be this little dial right down there okay now independent brake controls only locomotive brakes okay now this one you can go back and forth back and forth from two percent all the way to 100 percent and if you can look right up here, it's gonna be that red needle on the right hand side. You know, it, you can play back and forth with this. So you can say, okay, well, it's full application, that's 100%. I'm gonna go down to 50. Well, it's gonna hold at a, at a, at a steady, um, whatever it says, I think 30. Okay, well, I wanna go to 40. So there's a cool, you know, few quicks that are in at 40, and good. So the automatic brake does not do that, only the independent, okay? The automatic brake does do that if you are in passenger mode. But obviously, since we are um, CSX freight, uh, you, don't, you don't touch the passenger setting, okay? Coming down here on your brakes, you can actually see that when I release independent, piston goes in, and we're rolling. And piston goes out for application. Again, release. Piston goes in. I'll just put a little bit, and that pops out. Okay. So we're gonna put to 50%. You can see the piston pop out with what the automatic brake. Okay. Check this out. We're gonna switch over back to independent, and I'm gonna bail off. And I'll show you in the cab what it looks like. But I'm gonna bail off. Bailing off with your independent releases all of the locomotive brakes, but keeps the brakes set on the cars. So let's put about 45-ish uh, or 50. 53 is fine. Okay. All right. You can see that the red dial here, right-hand side, uh, the red needle, it's just uh, kind of under 20. That's telling us that the independent brake is on. So you can... And obviously here, full application. But if you go the opposite way, you know, you got release. But if you keep going past release, this is the bail off. And that's release and check it out. There's zero now. So now there's, we have no brake set on the locomotive, only the cars. And here's our automatic still on. Okay. One last brake that I think a lot of people might not know what it is. Okay. It's dynamic braking so let's go back outside okay dynamic braking is pretty much the locomotive's way so like a plane is right you have reverse thr uh, thrusters the locomotives have something like that which is dynamic where the wheels uh, your traction motors here okay so these you have your wheels here now uh, this is an st40 so it's a, it's a six axle you got three up here, you got three in the back. Uh, behind these wheels, kind of in the middle, are traction motors. Okay, now these are just literally big coils, coil of uh, motors that runs off electricity. And that's what's in here, in these big compartments, is a big generator. That's what produces, that's how a locomotive actually runs. It runs off electricity and not fuel. Okay. Because, you, you know, fuel it, it powers the generator, the generator produces electricity, and the traction motors get that from electricity. So in here, you have traction motors, okay? So what they do is when you use dynamic braking, they spin backwards, uh, depending on whatever way your, your uh, reverser is. So if it's going, f if it's going, if it's in forward, your wheels are going to spin backwards. If your reverse is in reverse, they're going to spin forward. It's an opposite direction. So it's it's the it, it, you know 
it's friction. They're, they're trying to slow you down. And they work pretty well too. So I'm going to put it back into forward. And we're going to, uh, first things first is this. When you are running dynamics, you, you can only use them when you're in idle and no amperage whatsoever. So you can see I'm in not throttle one, throttle two, and I'm pulling amps, about 200 amps, okay? Well, I cannot switch to um, dynamic until the amps hit zero. And then you can go in and do setup, okay? Now set up, give it a few seconds, about five to ten seconds, and that's allowing the uh, motor to know, hey, it, hey, bro, it's it's time to start working the opposite way. And once you do that, like I said, a couple seconds, and then you can start applying one, two, three, or whatever you need. Okay. Now up here in this uh, far right um, circle dial thing is your amperage. Okay. Now your amperage is either going to the right, which is green, and that's power amperage, so that's using your idle, and going to the left, which is yellow, that is your, your dynamic braking, okay? Now obviously it's not going to show up here, and it's because, well, we're not moving. So they don't have to, you know, they're not working right now. You can hear the engine revving up, and, you know, obviously it's, it's not right now, but it's... It, it, when you go down the line, you'll eventually see the amperage moving and all that stuff, and you'll feel, you know, the weight of the train crushing you. So dynamic braking is very good coming downhill, and you don't have to mess with these, okay? And so that's pretty much everything um, in detail of the braking systems. Now, if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe now when you do that youtube says hey well this video helped out this individual i'm going to push it and on the algorithm and show it to other people because i'm assuming a lot of people don't know what or how to even use these things all right so uh thanks for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you on the next one